Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Report. Ah, I'm sick of saying it. Today's episode is all about fades. We've done a few of these anthologies before, so you know the drill. I'm gonna first go through the defaults, then I'll show you some custom stuff that I've added, and we'll also look at some really important preferences you should know. As always, I'll blast through everything without getting bogged down by the details, but check out the blog post for this episode. I'll put a list of all the action names, shortcuts, and all that stuff, and you can even download all my fade-related mouse modifiers and hotkeys in one bundle if you wish, and I'll show you how to import and export them in the block. So let's get to it. So by default, I can bring my mouse to the top edge of any item and I can make a fade. You're welcome. But y'all already knew that. So another thing which I'm sure you know is this option, auto crossfade enabled, and you can press option and X to toggle it on and off. And when it's on, if I move an item to overlap another item, it will create an automatic fade. And this is awesome for any kind of like voiceover work, but if you need to preserve the timing of your items on your timeline, then this system is not great. So what you can do is set a time selection and then select both of your items and then press X and I'll put a crossfade there. But obviously that takes a little bit of time. So another thing you can do is hold option. And then when you right drag, you will both be setting a new time selection and a new item selection. So once I release this, I can just press X to do the crossfade that I want. So let's see that in quick action. Shablaps, shabloops, shablanks. You can also add shift to this, so option, shift, and right drag, and that will ignore snap as well. Shibli, bloop, 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 bap. And finally, we have the crossfade editor window, which is awesome. There's no hotkey for it by default, but let's run this and quickly go through some of its options. It'll open this little window and I can select two adjacent items or just a bunch of adjacent items and I can adjust their crossfades all together. So I can choose equal gain or equal power. I like equal power. And then you can set a length for it right here. So let me just zoom in here so you can see. So I can adjust the length up here for all crossfades at the same time. And I can adjust the curve from here and that will just occur for both of them but I can also unlink any of these parameters and then I have the left side here and the right side here so I can maybe make my left side a little more wide make my right side a little more sharp something like that you can also move their centers around so that will move the crossfade center for a bunch of items you can also change the start time so that'll make the crossfade shorter from the left side you can adjust the end time increase or decrease the end time of the fade you can also move contents which i don't know where in the world this will be useful for multiple fades but maybe for one fade that could be really good for fine tuning and for good measure they even threw a little volume adjustment there as well why not and you can just click on the preset and go back to the default and you can obviously also save anything as a preset that you want which is really cool you can also audition the first selected fade if you want to see how smooth your transition went and you can just press play here and it will pre-roll from one second before and you can adjust all of this as well you can also solo the track and so on so crossfade editor window really cool and there's no hotkey for it there are some useless mouse modifiers for it which i'll show you in a second so we will do something about this in the next segment where i'll show you my custom reaper Let's close out of this window for now. And one thing that the crossfade editor doesn't have is the ability to adjust non-crossfade fades. But one thing I can do with a bunch of items selected is pressing F2 to bring us to the media item properties. And I can, for example, set a one second fade in and a one second fade out for all of the items at the same time. Let's get to some mouse modifiers. So in preferences, editing behavior, mouse modifiers, there are a few contexts worth looking at. So let's look at them one by one. The first one is media item fade crossfade. And if I bring my mouse to any area of a fade and I hold command, I can change its fade type, but this is very annoying because every time I click on it, the fade shape changes and now I gotta go find the line again to change it to the next type. With shift and command, I can go to the previous type and with option, I can delete it all together. So these two are not really useful in my opinion because of the way they work. So I'll show you what I do in a second. But let's make another fade right here and we can look at some left drag stuff. Now, most of these work with crossfades more than they work with fades, but I'll show you one of the most useful ones. And that is if I have a few items selected and I make a fade, you can see that the others aren't changing. If I then even go ahead and group these items, that's still the same deal. But if I hold option and command while I move the fade, then all the fade-ins of all the selected items will move together. And since this one was longer to begin with, it'll remain longer. So it'll be relative edge edits. And I can do this to the fade outs as well. And finally, with double click, we have open crossfade editor and I can just double click on here and I'll go to the crossfade editor. But as you can see, this is kind of useless because it will only select one crossfade at a time. As you will see in a second, there's a lot we can do with one crossfade by just using mouse modifiers and I think it's better to just set a hotkey to a crossfade editor if this is the sort of thing you do very often. 
So let's move on to some crossfade stuff and a few of them are here but most of them are on the media item fade intersection. So let's look at those because those are way more useful and actually some of them are exactly the same. So in this context once again I can hold command to set the shape of both of these but again I need to go and find it if I want to set it to the next shape. So let's go to left drag and there's actually a lot of cool stuff we can do. So by default if I bring my mouse exactly to their intersection my icon changes and then I can move both fades left and right. Add option to this and I can now move them also up and down so I can essentially change their curve shapes as well which is a lot more useful if you ask me. If I hold shift I'll be moving the crossfade across these two items. If I hold command moving left will increase the crossfade size while preserving the center and moving right will decrease it while preserving the center which is super awesome. Shift and option is an interesting one as well. It'll move the crossfade but their center point in terms of the content of the audio items is preserved. The only thing that changes is the rate of the two items that are participating in this crossfade. So as I move this left my left item is getting faster and my right item is getting slower and vice versa which is quite an interesting thing to use in any kind of sound design kind of glitch making type of application. This would be a pretty neat thing to play around with a little bit. Option and double click will reset to default crossfade like this. So that's about all the hotkeys and mouse modifiers in Reaper Vanilla and we'll get to preferences in the end. So here we are in my custom Reaper and let me show you a few cool hotkeys. So first of all with any item selected and my edit cursor anywhere in the middle of the item if I press F it'll create a fade into the item and if I press G it'll create a fade out from the item. I can also do this to multiple item by making no item selection and then if I press F every item will fade in exactly to this time and I can have as many items as I want and their start time doesn't need to be the same and it also works for fade outs as well. I can select a bunch of items and press command and F and that'll remove their fades which is also very useful and I can also select a bunch of items and press option command shift and F and that'll bring my crossfade editor here where I can do all the stuff that we could do before. And I can close this window. So let's get to some mouse modifiers and in media item fade auto crossfade left drag. I have added this one adjust fade curve. So if I hold control I can now change my fade curve from right here which is much easier to do than having to click on it. And I can hit control and G to change the curve type and then from here I can still use control to adjust this further as I change these and I can just hit G to change it and I can keep holding control and move this up and down from wherever I want. Super nice. And with crossfades I haven't added any new mouse modifiers but I have another useful hotkey and that's control and X to cycle through fade shapes of one or multiple selected crossfaded items. One last useful thing for fades and that's actually not in any of the fade context but in the media item edge context. I have control set to move edge without changing fade time. So what that basically means is if I have a fade in like this, if I trim it like normal, the fade will just move with the trim. But if I hold control, the start time of the fade will remain the same, but I can make it a faster fade or a slower fade like this. Very useful. Now let's look at some useful preferences. Another useful thing to add is toggle enable disable default fade and fade out for new items. I have set that to command option and K to toggle on and off. And with that as I create a new item if I zoom in here you will see that there's a little fade here. Now the length of that you can adjust from your preferences, project and media item defaults. And the first box says create automatic fade in fade out for new items length whatever and you can additionally say do not set fade in fade out for imported items you know if you're importing stuff from libraries they will usually have a fade on them so you don't need to bother. The next option down here is super important and if you don't know about it it can really throw you off and that's called overlap and crossfade items when splitting and you can set a length for that which mine is 10 milliseconds. So what that means is when I split an item if I zoom in here you will see that an automatic crossfade has been created for the item. So if I for example place my edit cursor here and split you can see that the fade happened here but then the end of this item was overlapped on top of this item. So the first thing that happens with this crossfade is that the first transient we had is now a little muddled up which is not good. So just be aware of it. This is a very intelligent system overall because it cuts this item right at the edit cursor but this item will now be a little longer. So if you want to for example snap the end of this to a grid line you got to be really careful about that because the length of that has changed and it can throw off the timing of things for you. From this window you can also change the default fade in and fade out shape 
for both your fades and crossfades. And there are actions to take and untick these from your timeline without having to open your preferences. And I'll show you those in your blog. And actually this one doesn't have one, but now that your boy is getting fluent in scripting, maybe I'll make one. So that's it for today. A bunch of hotkeys, mouse modifiers, preferences and tips for working with fades. I hope you found this useful. And if you like this type of video, I have tons of videos like this where I talk about hotkeys and mouse modifiers. I personally love this stuff. It really makes quick work of some things that in previous DAWs that I used were a big nightmare to do, either in batches or just they were kind of hard to set up and not really intuitive. But in Reaper, all of this is super awesome. So if you're into this type of thing, check out this playlist that I'm going to link above. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. I promise to only spend it on hard drugs. Thanks to all our previous donors. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye.